Welcome to C of T 195's online lecture series. Today is the second video on coloring wood. Today we're going to talk about wood conditioners, stains, and dyes. Let's start off with stains. Oil-based stains are typically made up of pigment, a binder, which typically consists of linseed oil or tongue oil, in a vehicle, which is the solvent, whether it be paint thinner or mineral spirits. A binder is exactly pretty much what it sounds like. It binds the uh, product together. The vehicle is what allows the product to flow. Water-based stains are typically made up of pigment and water. Stains have to be what is called stirred into suspension. I'm going to demonstrate that in just a few minutes when I open up a can and show you um, a stain. So typically when you purchase a stain from a store, you open it up, you put your stir stick in, you pull it out, there's usually a little bit of a clump on the bottom of it. That clump is the pigment. The pigment must be stirred into suspension in order to activate the stain. One of the drawbacks of stains though is that stains sometimes go on blotchy. So for example, with cherry, maple, birch, Douglas fir, and poplar, stains tend to, be, tend to go on blotchy. Now, in order to help with the blotchiness, you would use something called a wood conditioner. Now, wood conditioner could be a variety of a couple different things. It could be, what you see right here, is a water-based wood conditioner made by General Finishes or you could use Minwax or Mohawk or whatever brand that you're using, doesn't matter. There's also an oil-based uh, wood conditioner used um, for oil-based stains. You can also use shellac, a one pound cut of shellac as a uh, wood conditioner for your wood. Or if you have this, for if you're somebody who likes to make your own stains and you have a non-pigmented stain, meaning a clear stain, you can use that clear stain as a wood conditioner. That is basically what these two products over here are, is a non-pigmented stain. When applying a stain, a stain does not penetrate into the wood. It pools onto the surface of the grain of the wood. What, and, but also, if it, you have any types of flaws or defects in your wood, meaning that you didn't get any mill marks out or you have some scratches, some cross grain scratches on your wood, the stain will enhance those. So you do want to make sure that you prep your wood accordingly. Stains are UV friendly, meaning that they do not fade in the sun very well, as easily as per se a dye would. So if you are doing a piece of furniture that's going to go outside, you would use a stain as opposed to a dye because it will fade. Um, it won't fade as quickly over time as a dye would. Now let's move on to dyes. In class, we typically use trans tints as our dyes. Trans tints are water-based, or they're alcohol-based as well. Another form of a dye are called aniline dyes. Aniline dyes are basically are a powder a powder that you dissolve into water. Or paint thinner or mineral spirits, depending upon if it's an oil-based or water-based aniline dye. But now, you, um, you do want to keep in mind when you're looking at these packages that you can't always really believe what they're saying. This right here calls it an oil stain powder. But it also says right underneath it that it is penetrating. And we've already discussed that stains are not penetrating. They flow onto the surface of the wood. So this, this right here is telling you that this is actually a dye, not a stain. Another type of colorant that you can use for your wood are UTCs. UTC stands for Universal Tinting Color. It is a pigment that can be mixed with epoxy, any of your oil-based finishes, your water-based finishes, or your solvent-based finishes, meaning shellac or a nitrocellulose lacquer. Now dyes, as you can see here, are in suspension versus a stain, which is not in suspension. So dyes, you do not have to mix or stir. They are transparent as opposed to a stain, which is more opaque. 
Dyes are great to use on blotchy woods because they flow more evenly because they penetrate into the surface of the wood. One of the downsides to using a dye is they are not UV friendly, meaning that they will fade in direct sunlight. So now we're actually gonna go and I'm gonna show you the different stains that I have right here in front of me. Stains and dyes can be really confusing. You can purchase a can of stain. Sorry, drop my stir stick right there. You can purchase a can of stain, open it up, and find out that it's actually a dye, that there's actually no pigment in it. So the only way to really tell whether or not a stain is actually a stain and a dye is actually a dye, or if it's a combination of a dye stain, is to open up the can, stick a stir stick in, and see what's in the bottom of it. So let's start here with safe coat, Durastain, the color is mahogany. So we have our safe coat, Durastain, mahogany. I'm gonna put my gloves on. By the way, I always wear gloves when working with dyes and stains because you will end up staining your fingers and your clothes. That's apron is also a good idea. So make sure you have gloves on because you're gonna color your fingers. I did it earlier on today. It was a little bit of a hurry. Nope, putting the glove on backwards. So before I open up this container, I'm gonna show you one important thing. You see right here on the lid and on the side, I drew a black Sharpie line. Before I open up the can, I drew this line. This line aligns the factory issued seal for the can. Excuse me. What it does is every time you open and close this can, if you put it to the original setting, it just helps prolong the life of your product. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open up this product. Now this product is listed as a stain. Stir stick, take it, stick it in the bottom. You can see right here, pigment, coloring. This is actually a dye stain combination. Pigment and coloring. So it is a stain, however, it also is a dye. Now we're going to open up another can. And the great part about labeling your can with the original seal is you can actually, you don't need to hammer down the uh, can after you're using it. You can just press it in and it works and you're sealing it properly. Let's take, though you can't see this very well, this is a Mohawk light red mahogany stain, oil based. I have my mark right there and on the top of my can. You can see this is an older can. This can is a couple years old. I've opened up my can. I have my stir stick, stick it in, look at that, there's pigment and there's dye. So this is a dye stain. See there it is again. Now, General Finishes Merlot. This is sold as a dye stain. So here I have um, my Merlot. I have my stir stick, I'm gonna scrape the bottom of it, I'm gonna pull it out. Here you can see, there is no pigment. All it is is coloring. The bottom here, which might look a little uh, misleading, all is just the dye that's pulling at the bottom of the stick. So I can tap that off, and it's gone. This is a dye. Here we have a Mohawk nutmeg water-based stain. And hopefully we'll have a last but not least scenario here. Oh, I think we have a winner. All right, I have my stir stick. I'm gonna stick it in, scrape it on the bottom, and I pull it out, and all you see here is pigment. Above the pigment, you might not be able to see this on camera, it's just water, it's clear. 
below it is the pigment, meaning this is a true stain. This is not a dye stain or a dye, but this is a true stain, meaning it only has pigment and water in it. Now I'm going to demonstrate for you how to apply a wood conditioner in a stain. And then we're going to move into dyes as well. So here I have a General Finishes water-based wood conditioner. And then I have my Safe Coat Duro Stain Mahogany. I open up. Look at that. This one's not marked. So let me mark this can with a factory edge. All right. I'm going to open up my can. Now I need to stir this. Now general finishes, stains tend to be a little bit thicker than your standard uh, general minwax or mohawk. As you can see, it's a little chunky. Oh, let's turn that around so you can actually see that. So stirring it and stirring it, put this over the side. Normally I would use a plastic cup, but for this demo I'm not going to use one. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, synthetic paintbrush, because it is water-based, and I'm going to just get some conditioner on there, apply it onto the surface of the wood. Seem to have a little too much, so we'll spread that out. And then while it is still wet, I'm going to take my stain. This I will just give it a little stir. Stirred it up before, so it should be good to go. Okay. Slip it over here. Uh, this I'm actually going to dip into the cup because I don't want to mix the wood conditioner in here, and I'm just going to place this on top of the lid to prevent any mess. Take my brush, I can use it. I don't have to clean in between the wood conditioner and the brush. And then I'm going to apply the stain onto the surface of the wood. Now when using a wood conditioner, you do not want to wipe it off. You just want to allow it to dry normally. But if you weren't using a wood conditioner and you were only using a rag, you would wipe the excess off. What I will do right now, though, is I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe my brush off for all the excess product. I'm just going to evenly coat the stain onto the wood, prevent any streakiness. This is a way to, move the, to remove the excess product without actually wiping it off with a rag. Doing so with a rag would remove the wood conditioner. And then I'm going to let that dry. That is it. That is applying a stain in a wood conditioner. Now before I move on to dyes, I want to show you one thing, which is in a gel stain. This is an oil-based gel stain made by General Finishes. It is called Candlelight. These stains are slightly different. They're rather thick. It's 
stain. Here I have our gel stain. I'm sticking my stir stick in. I'm going to stir it up a little bit. I'm going to show you. See how clumpy this is. See that? That is a gel stain. Gel stains are nice and clumpy. Now you do not need to use a wood conditioner with the gel stain. All you need to do is take your rag and I'm going to dip into the can, which you normally don't do for the sake of this demo. I have my product, put it off to the side. I'm just going to rag it on. Now if you see how heavy this is, you definitely do not want to leave it like this. Also using a ribbed rag might not be the best idea. That's all we got for the moment, so we're going to make it work. So I'm going to take a clean rag wipe off all the excess. If I need to grab another rag, I'll grab another rag too. I'm going to grab a second rag. All the excess. So you get a nice even coat. There you have it. That is a gel stain. You can probably still see the wood conditioner stain combination right next to it. By the way, this is curly maple that I'm using. If you, uh, for those of you that are wondering what type, type of wood this is. Now we're going to talk about dyes, the application of a dye. We're going to use, let's go with blue. Blue trans tint. Open the container. Typically, I would dump some into a plastic cup, but I'm not going to do that right now. Just a little bit of a waste. Take my rag. Soaked my rag. So I have my curly maple and my dye in my rag. I'm just going to wipe it on. Look at how it enhances the figure in this. Now this will raise the grain of your wood, so you may have to do a light sanding after you've applied the dye. So there you have the dye. See how it enhanced the figure of this maple. Now a fun little experiment that you can do is you can combine dyes. Now here's a piece that I worked on before to show you guys. This is a yellow and blue dye combination. Here, I started with a blue dye. I applied it. I let it dry for about 20 minutes or so. Then I applied a one pound cut of shellac for a seal coat. And I sanded it down. And then I applied the yellow trans tint on top of it. You can see you have the color variation between the yellow and the green. The figure is more enhanced than the green. Now on the opposite side, I just made green. All I did was I started with the uh, blue and then I put yellow on top of it with no seal coat in between, nor did I sand in between. And I just created a green dye. And that's, dyes can be fun like that. Is that you, can, you can mix and match, you can make your own colors. It's kind of a little bit of a fun experiment that you have. You, can, you get to do with your coloring of a wood. Before we go, let me show you one last thing. Right here, we had just had a piece of wood that has been colored, that is finished in shellac, but it's colored shellac. So I used a brown trans tints to color the shellac, and then I applied it to the piece of wood. And you end up, excuse the uh, screw holes, but you end up with brown shellac. So shellac is also, um, you do have the ability to color shellac as well using the trans tint uh, coloring. That is it for coloring wood. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.